Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Denetis and welcome to One Year 365. This is the second part of the American football mini series, and today we'll actually talk about the history of football. Uh, previous one in the part one we talk about American football in general and you know things that kind of differentiate that from um, the regular uh, football not regular football but more like the European football right so yeah it's kind of different and yeah we already talked about that previously and today we'll actually start talking about the history itself because the history of football is kind of interesting in a way that um, it kind of derived from soccer and then people you know like uh, um, back then they start changing the rules and so it's now the football that we all know today and you know the fact that there is so many stuff that changed um, it's like uh, yeah it's like law pretty much if you think about it um, it it keeps getting updated every now and then so yeah well law is probably a little bit you know um, a strong example let's just take a look at yes yeah, it's like games right like games you have uh, games getting updated every updated every now and then and you know more patch notes and stuff like that so I guess it's kind of the same and okay let's start uh, I don't want to make this video a little bit too long so it's probably gonna be like 20 minutes or so I have the clock <laughs> next to me uh, so that I don't go off tangent quite often because I don't want to make this video a little bit too long um, anyway early history American football evolved from the sports of rugby and soccer rugby like American football is a sport where two competing teams fee for control of a ball which can be kicked through a set of goal posts or run into the opponent's goal area to score points uh, what is considered to be the first American football game was played on November 6th, um, 1869 uh, between Rutgers and Princeton, two college teams, which is interesting, right? Like, the first football game was actually played in college teams, which is kind of interesting, if you ask me, because, uh, well, I guess it makes sense as well. Uh, you know, it's not gonna be the biggest thing because it's like literally the first one. It's like, uh, what is it called? Like, a, um, like a demo. But <laughs> yeah, it's like a demo. Like literally, it's like the first game, right? Um, they consisted of twenty-five players per team and used a round ball that could not be picked up or carried. Interesting. So the first one was twenty-five players instead of eleven. And the ball is still round, okay? Uh, yeah, that will get patched out in, you know, in coming years, yeah? It could, however, be kicked or batted with the feet, hands, head, or sides, with the objective being to advance it to the opponent's goal. Um, Rutgers won the game 6-4. Uh, collegiate play continued for several years with matches played using the rules of the host school. Representatives of Yale, uh, Yale or Yale, Yale, I think, Columbia, Princeton, and Rutgers met on October 19th, 1873, to create a standard set of rules for use by all schools. Teams were set at 20 players each. Okay, here we go. The, the first uh, patch notes. Uh, it's now 20 instead of 25, and fields of 400 by 250 feet. So they still use feet instead of yard. Uh, 122 meters times 76 meters were specified. Harvard abstained from the conference as they favored a rugby style game that allowed running with the ball. Oh, they still not allowed to run with the ball. Okay, uh, then <laughs> we all know that that will get patched out as well, right? Uh, after playing McGill University, using both Canadian and American rules, the Harvard players preferred the Canadian style of having only 11 men on the field. Yeah, okay, here we go. So that's another patch. Running the ball without having to be chased by an opponent. Uh, running the ball without having to be chased. Okay, so now you can run with the ball without having to be chased. Uh, interesting. The forward pass, tackling and using an oblong instead of a round ball. Okay, here we go again. Like the ball is now changed. Uh, it's an oblong instead of round ball. Interesting, right? Yeah. Um, uh, 1875 Harvard, so that's three years later. No, two years later. 
Yale, Harvard Yale game played under rugby style rules was observed by two Princeton athletes who were impressed by it. They introduced the sport to a Princeton, a fit the Professional Football Researchers Association compared to selling refrigerators to Eskimos. Ah, okay. Um, so it's unnecessary, right? Uh, Princeton, Harvard, Yale, and Columbia then agreed to intercollegiate uh intercollegiate uh, play using a form of rugby union rules with a modified scoring system. Oh, that is interesting. Um, okay, I just realized it means that rugby itself is, you know, a game before football. Uh, I see. Well, it's kind of obvious, right? It got derived from soccer and rugby uh, at the same time. Interesting. Um... Uh, these schools formed the Intercollegiate Football Association, uh, although Yale Yale did not join until 1879. Yale player Walter Kemp, now regarded as the father of American football. Oh, okay, I see. So it's a person. Uh, secured rule changes in 1880, that's five years later, that reduced the size of its team from 15 to 11 players and institutes. Uh, the snap to replace the chaotic and inconsistent scrum. I see. Um, I think snap happens uh, at the start of the game. I think it's like when you start and then people just uh, you know um, do body hold each other. I think that's what is called a snap. I'm not entirely sure though. Um, while the game between Rutgers and Princeton is commonly considered the first uh, American football game. Several years prior, in 1862, the uh, Oneida Football Club formed as the oldest known football club in the U.S. The team consisted of graduates of Boston's elite preparatory schools and played from 1862 to 1865. I see. Evolution of the game. Okay. Uh, a photograph of Walter Kemp, the father of American football, taken in 1878 when Kemp was captain of Yale's football team. Okay, so this is the person. Um, is this a photograph? I think this is. This looks like painting, though. I mean, yeah, like it's 1878. So, uh, what do you expect, right? I feel like, uh, is it camera or? Nah, I think this is just a painting, right? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, he doesn't look big though. If you ask me, he didn't look big. Uh, which is kind of interesting because uh, he probably is tall by the looks of you know his posture. I feel like he's a tall person, probably six five or something. I'm not sure. Um, you can kind of tell, right, by the you know the the length of the head, the height of the head, and then compare that to the size of the body and then the leg as well you can kind of see like you know this leg and then this is the knee and then this is the you know like the wrist and i feel like uh not wrist a waist i mean and yeah it's just i think he's a tall guy actually but he's not as big which kind of is interesting because i feel like football players they are kind of big uh why well it's obvious because there will be lots of physical contact uh included not included but more like happen right so they kind of need to be big uh, just to hold off the momentum or you know just to absorb all the energy uh, impact energy i guess um okay so this is the father of american football i guess walter cam was kind of it's like uh, like professor i guess like you can kind of tell it that way that they uh, you know he uh, proposed uh, rules probably and then it got applied and yeah uh, I feel like that's what happened there the introduction of the snap resulted in an unexpected consequence uh, before the snap the strategy had been to punt if a scrum resulted in bad field position however a group of Princeton players realized that as the snap was uncontested they could now hold the ball indefinitely to prevent their opponent from scoring in 1881, in a game between Yale and Princeton, both teams used this strategy to maintain their undefeated records. Each team held the ball, gaining no ground for entire half, resulting in a 0-0 tie. This block game proved extremely unpopular with both teams, spectators, and fans. Okay, um, extremely unpopular with both teams and spectators and fans. I don't know what that means. Does it mean 
Did it mean that people didn't actually like that? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think. A rule change was necessary to prevent this strategy from taking hold, and a reversion to the scrum was considered. However, Cam successfully proposed a rule. Okay, so this is the two, the, the person, the, the guy, the man. Successfully proposed a rule in 1882, that is two years later, I believe. It was 1880, right? Uh, yeah, 1880 over here, so that was two years later. Uh, that limited each team to three downs or tackles to advance the ball five yards, 4.6 meters. Oh, okay, so five yards is 4.6 meters. Uh, interesting. Failure to advance the ball. Uh, so, you know, I kind of want to check this. 460 centimeters divided by 30. That is uh, one about 16 feet or i don't know 16 to 18 or 20 feet probably uh no not 20 it's probably 15 16 feet or something i think uh, yeah let's just say 15 feet so one yard is 15 feet um failure to advance the ball the required distance within those three downs would result in control of the ball being forfeited to the other team this change effectively made american football a separate sport from rugby and the resulting 5-yard lines added to the field to measure distances made it resemble a grid iron in appearance. Ah, I see. So this change uh, made it so that, you know, football is now different from rugby. And then there is also this line that makes it turn into grid iron in appearance. Other major rule changes include a reduction of the field size. To 110 by 53 and third yards that's 148 so previously it was uh what is it let's see here i think we found that yeah uh it's down 22 meters and what is it 76 to 48 oh that's actually 30 meters down and what is it 20 meters down and 30 meters down this is interesting and the adoption of scoring system that awarded 4 points for a touchdown, 2 for a safety, and a goal following a touchdown, and 5 for a goal from the field. Additionally, tackling below the waist was legalized, and a static line of scrimmage was instituted. Okay, what is this? 1908 cartoon by W.C. Uh, Morris, highlighting the dangers that were associated with the sport. Okay, uh... Despite the, these new rules, football remained a violent sport. Yeah, I guess it's it's kind of obvious, right? I mean, yeah, we just had the um, tragedy, I think, like last month with uh, Hamlin, I think. Is it called Damar Hamlin? I'm not sure. Uh, dangerous mass formations like the Flying Wedge resulted in serious injuries and deaths. Oh, that's kind of grim now. Uh, 1905 peak of 19 fatalities nationwide resulted in a threat by President Theodore Roosevelt to abolish the game unless major changes were made. Ah, I see. Um, so that was 25 years later. There's 19 fatalities. That is almost one every year. But yeah. Um, in response, 62 colleges and universities met in New York City to discuss rule changes on December 28, 1905. Okay, uh, these proceedings resulted in the formation of the Intercollegiate Athletic Association of the United States, later renamed the NCAA, National Collegiate Athletic Association. Okay, uh, the legal forward pass was introduced in 1906, although its effect was uh, initially minimal due to the restrictions placed on its use. The idea of a 40-yard wider field was opposed by Harvard due to the size of the new Harvard Stadium. Other rule changes introduced that year included the reduction of playing time from 70 to 60 minutes and an increase of the distance required for a first down from 5 to 10 yards, 4.6 to 9.1 meters, okay, to reduce in fighting and dirty play between teams. The neutral zone was created along the width of the football before the snap. Scoring was also adjusted. Points awarded for field goals were reduced to 3 in 1909, and points for touchdowns were raised to 6 in 1912. Oh, that's actually interesting. Touchdowns is 6. Interesting. Uh, also in 1912, the field was shortened to 100 yards, 91 meter long, to 
10 yard long and zones were created and teams were given 4 downs instead of 3 to advance the ball 10 yards okay so that that basically introduced more uh, lines into the grid pretty much um, the roughing the passer penalty was implemented in 1914 and eligible players were first allowed to catch the ball anywhere on the field in 1918 ah, in interesting so yeah like i said it's just patches upon patches upon patches and you know just to make the game more um, you know more fair and to reduce the injury as well which is interesting uh next we have professional era, okay, uh, Pouch Havelfinger, widely regarded as the first professional football player, okay, why? It's probably Yale, I think, I'm not sure though. Um, a team from the Indiana Soldiers and Sailors Children's Home, okay, 1896. On November 12, 1892, uh, that's before the changes have been made. Uh, Pouch Havelfinger was paid $500, equivalent to 15000 in 2021, that's a lot, to play a game, a game, by the way, one game, for the LA Cheney Athletic Association in a match against the Pittsburgh Athletic Club. This is the first recorded instance of a player being paid to participate in a game of American football. Although many athletic clubs in the 1880s offered indirect benefits, such as helping players attain employment, giving out trophies, or watches that players could pawn for money, or paying double in expense money. Despite these extra benefits, the game had a strict sense of amateurism at the time, and direct payment to players was frowned upon, if not prohibited outright. Over time, professional play became increasingly common, and with it came rising salaries and unpredictable player movement, as well as the illegal play payment of college players who were still in school ah, i see uh the nfl a group of professional teams national football league a uh, teams that was originally established in 1920 so that's uh, basically a few years later after the the changes have been made um aim to solve these problems okay this new league stated goals included to an end to bidding wars over players Prevention of the use of college players and abolition of the practice of paying players to leave another team. Ah, I see. So you cannot bribe players to, uh, you know, like uh, get out of their team, pretty much. By 1922, uh, the NFL had established itself as America's premier professional football league. And it, you know, until now. So, so it's already been 100 years. Interesting. Uh, yeah, 103 years. Oh, interesting, actually. Um, the dominant form of football at the time was played at the collegiate level. The upstart NFL received a boost to its legitimacy in 1925. However, when an NFL team, the Pottsville Maroons, defeated a team of Notre Dame, all stars in exhibition game. Okay, I thought that was something. Uh, a greater emphasis on, I mean, a, there will be more clause to it, but apparently not. A greater emphasis on the passing game helped professional football to distinguish itself further from the college game during the late 1930s. Football, in general, became increasingly popular following the 1958 NFL Championship game, a match between the Baltimore Colts and the New York Giants that is still referred to as the greatest game ever played. Uh, okay, so that's in 1958. The game, a 23-17 overtime victory by the Colts, was seen by millions of television viewers and had a major influence on the popularity of the sport. This, along with the innovations introduced by the new American Football League, in the early 1960s helped football to become the most popular sport in the U.S. by mid-1960s. Uh, um, the rival AFL arose in 1960 and challenged the NFL's dominance. The AFL began in relative obscurity but eventually thrived, with an initial TV contract with the ABC television network. Uh, existence forced the conservative to expand to Dallas and Minnesota in an attempt to destroy the new league. Meanwhile, the AFL introduced many new features to professional football in the U.S. Official time was kept on a scoreboard clock rather than on a watch in the referee's pocket as the NFL did. 
Optional to point conversions by pass or run after touchdowns, names on the jerseys of players and several others, including expansion of the role of minority players actively recruited by the league in contrast to NFL. Also signed several star college players who had also been drafted by NFL teams. Competition for players heated up in 1965 when New York Jets signed rookie Joe, uh, Joe Namath to a then record 437,000 contracts, uh, I mean dollar contracts, equivalent to 2.91 million, a five-year $40 million NBC television contract followed, which helped to sustain the young league. So they started to, you know, recruit the young players. I guess it makes sense um, because eventually the old guys, the old men will have to retire at some point, right? Um, especially when probably they have like trauma on as accident on physical contact or something they probably like um you know retire just for that so there there should be more young people right otherwise the team will not sustain um that's kind of interesting uh okay 1970 there's a merger a disagreement provided for a common draft that would take place each year and it instituted an annual world championship game to be played between the champions of its league. This championship game began play at the end of the 1966 season. Once the merger was completed, it's no longer a championship game between two leagues and reverted to the NFL championship game, which came to be known as the Super Bowl. Ah, I see. So that's the origin of Super Bowl, which we'll talk in part 6, I believe. Uh, that will be four episodes from now. Uh, not necessarily episode, but like four parts from now. Um, college football maintained a tradition of post-season bowl games. Its bowl game was associated with a particular conference and earning a spot in bowl game was the reward for winning a conference. This arrangement was profitable but it tended to prevent the two top-ranked teams from meeting in a true national championship game, as they would normally be committed to the bowl games of their respective conferences. Several systems has, have been used since 1992 to determine a national champion of college football. The first was the Bowl Coalition in place from 1992 to 1994. This was replaced in 1995 by the Bowl Alliance, uh, which gave way in 1997 to the Bowl Championship Series. Um, the arrangement proved to be controversial and was replaced in 2014 by the college football playoff and that is the end of the history and i guess the rule stays until now i'm not sure if there's more changes but i feel like the important year was somewhere around 1900s like actually the year 1900 because uh where is it i think like yeah there's over here right there's so many um Injuries in at the course of 25 years. I believe there was 19 injuries uh, if I'm not mistaken and You know that that also got uh, Got the attention from the president and he you know told basically told that you know you better change this or uh, I will ban this uh, sport pretty much uh, and you know they don't want that to get banned or you know got um, what is it like uh, disbanded so they try to make more rules just to you know the just to ensure the safety of the players because yeah up until now I feel like uh, what is it like a football is a violent game I would say um, you need you know like it's there's so many physical contact like if you're not ready for that, you're just gonna get injured, like, easily, so, you know, there's that, but, yeah, just like the current, you know, the, the previous tragedy that happened earlier this uh, year, but, anyway, that's a bit for this one, this is part two, talking about the history of football, now I know the origin of football, which is uh, interesting, so it was 1869, I guess it's easy to remember, because 69, and then on 1900s, um, they refer that, you know, adds more patches, patches, patches. And I guess that's just how, you know, the football that we are knowing today. But anyway, that will be for this one. I hope you guys enjoy it. I will see you again tomorrow with another discussion. And until then, see ya.